everybody, this is Danessa. I'm the volunteer coordinator for Sean Frame for Congress. And we are going to be downloading and installing the PDI app for canvassing. So we're going to start by going into our store, whether that be your iPhone store or in my case, the Android store called the Play Store. And we'll just type in PDI. And what should come up first is this little PDI Mobile Connect. That's the app. We want to hit install. And when it's all done, we're going to open that app. The front page of that app is going to look like this. You'll put in your email address that you provided to us at check-in and the password you've been assigned and go ahead and log in. Sometimes it takes just a, a couple seconds for it to upload the data. Everybody's is different, so um, it might take a little bit longer. And this is the page you're going to see. Um, my assignments. We're going to start up here in the little in the right hand corner with the little three dots. Sync list is going to allow you to sync all of the information you've input. That definitely has to be done at the conclusion of your canvas, but I would suggest doing it more often, maybe for every street. And if you have a lot of battery life, um, you could even do it after every canvas. This ensures that the information gets to um, us at the conclusion of the canvassing. If for some reason you weren't able to sync, none of that information would be saved for us to be able to use in the future. So it's really important that we sync. Um, there is a call campaign button right below that that will connect you to the campaign cell phone and um, you know we can answer any questions or if there's any problems we can address those. And then right below that allows you to log out of the PDI app. We can close that. And just before we get into this here, the green button below that says get directions, it doesn't work super well to uh, provide you a map. It depends on whether or not you're on Wi-Fi or um, what kind of wireless service you have. So I'm going to skip over that. We can test it in the room. You should only have one canvassing assignment at the very top of your canvas assignment. It says your precinct number. Um, it will say whatever your canvas happens to be. It could be um, Canvassing Tuolumne 1, right underneath that tells you how many voters are in your canvas, how many houses you have to knock on doors. So there's actually 363 houses and 483 voters in those 363 houses. And then the Dubai is just a arbitrary date that we've put in. So we're going to go ahead and click on that survey. It's going to give you three options, a street view, a map view, and a people view. If you click on the map view, it will show you the proximity of the homes in this precinct um, on the streets. You can do the pinch in where you zoom in and check it out. And it will show you how many homes are on each particular street in a concentrated area. You can also do the people view. That sorts them by last name. It's not super helpful or effective. I'd recommend using the street view. It'll put all of the streets in alphabetical order, however, not by location. So I would recommend going to the map view. And if, for instance, you happen to be on Van Gogh Drive, um, you might want to look over at Rennie Court after that. And that would require you going from Van Gogh Drive all the way down here, canvassing those two, and then coming back up and going to Rennie Court save you a lot of time and headache. So before we click on one of our streets in the upper left hand corner you have three dots again. These ones are going to be a little bit different on the, on the last page. It will show you that all the addresses um, in this list you can also break down by even and odd. So if you wanted to just canvas one side of the street it will give you all of the odd houses and then you coming back up, you could, you could go on the opposite side of the street. It'll also give you your stats. So I've looked at one survey today and I marked it as canvassed. So there's one person attempted, one door knocked, this amount of people and doors remaining in my precinct. Those numbers are gonna be the same for today unless we're having a multiple day canvas or if you're coming back to um, canvas these same people as we will be talking about as part of our canvassing training. All right, and we'll click on those three dots again just to go through the rest. 
full survey is just the it, everybody has the full survey call campaign another opportunity to call a campaign if you need anything mail um, if you clicked on it it would encourage you to send mail to somebody I don't recommend that and the canvasser survey in this case there isn't one um, and stop just means you're exiting out of there okay so let's start on Elysium circle we're gonna click on that and it's gonna pop down all of the people that are on this street um, green means that they have not been knocked on yet at the very top you're gonna see their address 3385 underneath that you're gonna see the name of the voter if there's multiple voters in the home, as is the case at 3467, you'll see the different names of the people in the home. There could be 10 people in the home sometimes. Um, so it's gonna show you some information and that same information is gonna appear on the next screen. So I'll tell you about that once we click on it. All right, so at the very top here, underneath the address, it's the name of the person, Karen Shetty. And the right hand corner, it's going to tell you their party affiliation. DS means declined to state. R would mean Republican. D for Democrat. Um, AI for American Independent. And only the Republican and the Democrats are colored. Democrats are blue. Republicans are red. The rest of them are grayed out because they're uh, not as popular party affiliations. Underneath Karen Shetty's name has her age, 52, um, her gender female. PAV means she's a permanent absentee voter, which means she gets her vote by mail ballot automatically. And then next to that is VTS-1. VTS stands for voter turnout status. Um, voter turnout is how many uh, times have they actually voted in, in the last five elections. So if that person had not voted at all in the last five elections, which include the general and the primary, um, then it would say a zero. In this case, it says one out of the last five elections. If they voted every single time, it would say five out of the last five elections. Disposition, if we were to click on that, this is where we would mark if somebody is not home, if they've moved, if they refused, gated, um, or inaccessible. I would use that for inaccessible, perhaps super long driveway, you know, a rural property, maybe you didn't feel safe, feel free to mark gated, or if somebody indicates this person has uh, deceased. I'll click on info and survey in just a moment, but you'll notice right underneath this, it says, did you find any of the following? And it has six different tags. Unfortunately, it does not allow you to expand those. You can um, see them a little more clearly on a tablet, but on a mobile phone, um, you get a very small view of what it says. And so I'll have to tell you what they mean. Um, these are tags for PDI and lets them know uh, the type of household that we have. So in the top left, HH has C, that is children. Right underneath it, HH has P, that means pets. If we're up at the top in the middle, HH has D, that means a disabled person in the home. Right underneath that has S, that's a senior citizen in the home. And to the right, uh, top corner, HH has blank, that actually is for military service. And right underneath that is the US flag. So as you're coming up to Canvas and you see a US flag in front of the home, you can go ahead and tag that. And if the person that answered the door is an elderly person, you could tag senior. And if perhaps they were wearing a US Navy veterans hat, you could tag military service. And if at their feet was a barking dog, you could tag pets. And maybe um, a little person ran up to the door um, with their grandpa, you could tag that there is a child in the home. And maybe during your conversation, they indicate that they were disabled in the military, you could click that as well. And then they're all unclickable. But please try to click those if you can because it does keep PDI updated and it helps us narrow our um, canvassing in the future. All right, we're gonna move back up to where it says Info Plus. If you click on that, it's gonna give you the voter's phone number. Um, if they have an email, it will give you their email. And then right below that is the comments. And that's where we're gonna be able to type in data that we weren't able to fill out on the survey that we'll get to next. And in the survey, it's only gonna allow you to select one answer per question, even though the voter might touch on a multiple 
on multiple issues. So any additional issues, any story, um, or if this person is super interested in Sean's campaign and wants to volunteer, go ahead and make all those comments in this section. And when you're done, hit save. And then finally, we'll get to the survey. The survey, um, in this case, has five different questions. And it's you'll start with answer number one. You can only choose one of each. These questions are going to vary just a little bit from what's on your paper because there was a character limit as part of this the PDI information that we've entered. So um, you, you want to focus on the script that you've been provided on your actual piece of paper and that we'll practice in our training. Um, but make sure that you answer each question, whatever it happens to be. And if there's additional issues that they touch on, go ahead and input those um, under the comments in the info plus section. Then you can just hit save. That will save that. And if we were to back out of this now, it will show this as red. That means that's a door that we have already knocked in Canvas and spoken to somebody at. If, for instance, we hadn't spoken to somebody, maybe um, they weren't home. If we marked not home, then it turns yellow. And that allows us to, if we finish early, um, go back and knock on those same doors again. Maybe they've come home and we can have a conversation with them. Okay, if you have any additional questions, don't forget to sync, which we will have to do once we back out. Go to sync list. It will update it. And that will ensure that the data gets to the campaign. And don't forget to come back after your canvas for the debrief, which is really important. If you have any additional questions, just ask the trainer. And thank you very much for coming out to Canvas today. Have a good time.